All right. Good morning. Welcome to the National Park Service Chesapeake Gateways information session for our network. Um, we have a special session today where we're going to be introducing our network partners to a technical assistance program, a community assist assistance program of the National Park Service known as Rivers, Trails and Conservation Assistance. So we'll introduce that team in just a minute. Um, and really, we're going to be focusing on the difference um, between financial assistance, where federal um, agencies can provide um, funding assistance through grants and federal aid, but many federal programs also have the ability to provide technical assistance. So expertise, staff power, um, coordination, and, and support for communities. So you're going to get to learn about a long-standing, um, just beloved community uh, community assistance program for the National Park Service. Um, but first, we want to just do a little grounding. Um, next slide, please. So um, we are, I'm showing sort of the calendar for the Chesapeake Gateways Network chats and info sessions. Um, just a little bit of news. Uh, earlier this week on Monday evening, midnight was the deadline for the applications for the Chesapeake Gateways grants. And thank you to all of those that applied. There were over 90 applications for our grants. We now are shifting into a mode to verify those applications that they're eligible. Um, and those that are determined to be eligible will then start the process um, and the next really big step is for a review panel to um, go through all the applications rate and rank. So we have a, a long um, process ahead to make selections, but um, good luck to everyone that applied and thank you so much for the, um, the large interest in our grant, our first time that we're really doing a formal grant program for Chesapeake Gateways. Um, you'll see on the calendar here where we are, which is the, the get to know the RTCA program, but we wanted to highlight that the next chat is set for April 6th, um, and it's going to be focusing on refreshing the Chesapeake Gateways Network and really wanting partners to join to um, understand uh, and, and reintroduce Gateways um, network to everyone and how partners and connections and alignments um, can, be, can be brought forward. Um, and then we'll have a, a series of, of monthly chats that we'll be announcing um, and those are to come. And we're working on identifying a, a time and a place to do a gathering as a Chesapeake Gateways Network training workshop. So in-person, multi-day, multi uh, event later, um, either late summer or, or into the fall. So stay tuned for that. Um, all right, next slide. So just to run quick through the agenda, um, we always start, if you're new to joining a Chesapeake Gateways chat or info session, we always start um, with networking. So it's about, you know, knowing each other and, and exchanging ideas. Um, so we will have a, a little piece a portion of time that we call the network triads and you'll learn about that in a second i'll run through a very quick overview about the chesapeake gateways program and the bulk of our um, hour here today will be the nps rtca team sharing about their program and upcoming opportunity to apply for their technical assistance and then we'll open it up to a full uh, q a and discussion so uh, next slide. Um, all right, so we're gonna do our network triads. I'm gonna introduce uh, Rebecca Stanfield McCowan to help explain this process. She is the director of the National Park Service Stewardship Institute. And um, she and Brent Mitchell, one of our partners has been helping MPS Chesapeake make sure we're always grounded in collaboration and networking. So Rebecca, could you help 
share what we're going to do next? Yes, thank you, Wendy. So as Wendy said, we like to kick off these sessions with an opportunity for everybody who has joined us to connect with about two other people within the watershed, your partners that you may be working with on a regular basis, maybe it's someone brand new, and get to talk about one question. So we pick one question each time that helps relate to the topic we're about to um, explore more in depth or gives you an opportunity to share something that you're excited to be working on. So for this session, when we break into the triads, you will be with approximately three other people, and we're going to ask you to share your name and organization. And then the question we'd like you to reflect on as a group is what kind of conservation and outdoor recreation needs does your, computer, does your community have and need help with? So what do you see on the landscape of your community that you could really use assistance with in the with regards to conservation and outdoor recreation? These are short uh, conversations, you know, probably about two minutes each person, but gives you a chance to hear what's happening in someone else's community, someone else's neighborhood. And then we'll come back together and do a quick share out in the chat of what y'all heard. And then we'll dive into the rest of the session. So Brent will send us into triads. I'm going to put the instructions in the chat for you. Um, if you need the captioner in your triad, send Brent a message and we'll work on getting the captioner set into your, your triad as we, as we break out. So that message would go to Brent Mitchell. So Brent, are we ready to to go into our session. We'll have about you know six minutes total, so a real um, short amount of time, but an opportunity to meet some folks. Uh, just one second, please. People keep joining as we go. <laughs> All right, as everybody comes back, I know everyone, someone got cut off mid-sentence. It's never enough time. Exactly. <laughs> so as we um, start to tee up the next section of our, our morning together, if folks could pop into the chat, some of the things that you heard, maybe what you shared about what you see as a community need or uh, some synergy between what your small triad talked about um, as community needs. I know in mine, we talked a little bit about trails and providing connection across trails, whether they be trails um, in more rural areas or connecting um, rail trails and, and greenways in more populated places. And while we are capturing those, I'm going to turn it back over to Wendy. Thanks, Rebecca. Great, thank you for putting uh, in the chat. We're gonna be capturing the chat from the whole day, um, from the whole session. So um, hopefully in your triad, you either met someone new or reconnected um, with uh, someone that you've known before. So we always try to start that way, both to have a moment of sharing, um, to have a moment of, um, you know, connecting with, with new and, and longstanding um, partners. So hopefully um, you met some new folks. I know that I'm gonna be circling around with Lori from Pennsylvania 
on some ideas that, that we just talked about. Um, but for those that are totally new to joining a Chesapeake Gateways um, network chat, I'm just gonna do a quick um, run through of background and overview of the program. So the MPS Chesapeake Gateways um, is a partnership network and a community assistance program. We are created by Congress um, 25 years ago. This year marks the 25th anniversary of Chesapeake Gateways. And our area of work is the full 41 million acre watershed of the Chesapeake Bay. So this map here, the, the shaded area represents where that watershed is. So we run from New York through Pennsylvania, parts of West Virginia, parts of Delaware, almost all of Maryland, a huge part of Virginia, and of course, all of DC. Next slide. Our program is really focused on places, people, stories, equity, and inclusion. And um, we are, we, when you think about the Chesapeake Gateways, like I said, it's a partnership and a technical and financial assistance program. In the partnership side and as a network, it's broken into sort of general um, structure of gateway places, sites, physical places that are helping tell a piece of what makes the Chesapeake special. So parks and refuges, historic sites, museums, and other places that partner zone. Some are national parks, um, some are state parks, some are private um, nonprofits that are running remarkable places. Um, and we're moving in a direction of um, starting to think about establishing Chesapeake Gateway communities. So finding those places where there's complexes, um, multiple um, gateway sites and programmatic partners that are part of iconic um, Chesapeake watershed communities. So, you know, that's just a really basic snapshot. Our office does technical assistance, financial assistance, and partnership networking. And under that partnership networking, we try to bring um, together our partners for shared learning, for collaboration. Um, and today we're gonna be focusing on sharing a part of the National Park Service that is also a community assistance program and works throughout our watershed. Um, so next slide. So we're going to, I'm going to pass it over to the team at um, RTCA, Rivers, Trails, and Conservation Assistance. Um, and I'll have um, Natalia Sanchez introduce her team that's here with her. Um, and just really want to thank them for coming and sharing about their program and finding ways how we can help our network partners and community partners across the watershed. Natalia, next slide. Thank you, Andy. Can you hear me well? Yes. Excellent. Well, um, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. I've been looking at the participants and I see current partners. Thank you for coming here. And you may be hearing about your project, so quick FYI. Uh, connections that we have made through some of our other projects and uh, past partners. So again, thank you so much for, for attending today. As Wendy mentioned, my name is Natalia Sanchez um, and I am an outdoor recreation planner with the River Trails and Conservation Assistance Program, RTCA for short, based in the Washington DC area. I'll pass it over to my colleague Tomas to do a little bit of an introduction, Tomas. Thank you, Natalia, and nice to see you all. I'm Tomas Dessa, and I'm based out of the Philadelphia office, the regional office for the Northeast region. And I'm also working for the national the RTCA program. Thank you, Tomas. And then I'll pass it over to Lilia. Unmute. Lilia Mellon. I am also with the Rivers and Trails program, um, sometimes that's what we call it for short, or RTCA, and I am work and live in the Connecticut River Valley, so not in the Chesapeake Bay, in Vermont. Thank you, Lilia. 
So again, today we would like to introduce you to a resource the MPAs can provide to communities that are looking to leverage their outdoor recreation and nature opportunities, or that are looking to create those opportunities. Next slide, please. Thank you. So uh, the agenda for today, um, we're going to do a quick introduction as to who we are as a program, what it is that we do, and how you can apply for our assistance. And then we will open it up to questions. Next slide, please. Thank you. So I'm going to just step, um, take a, a step back really quickly and mention that a part of the mission of the National Park Service is to extend the benefits of conservation and outdoor recreation to communities across the nation. So for this reason, the Park Service administers a host of community assistance programs that are available to state, local, and tribal governments, nonprofit organizations, businesses, educational institutions, and the general public. Next slide, please. Thank you. So one of those programs is ours, of course, uh, the RTCA program, but MPS administers over 50 of those programs. And of course, we want you to learn about this program. So we're going to add the link uh, to the National Park Service Community Assistance website to the chat, as well as to the directory, which is the image that you're seeing on the screen so that you can check some of the other programs that um, you can leverage in terms of not just technical assistance, but also financial assistance. Next slide, please. Thank you. So who are we? So again, we provide free technical assistance grants to support locally led conservation and outdoor recreation projects across the US. We assist communities and stakeholders in developing or restoring parks, for example, trails, conservation areas, rivers, and wildlife habitats, as well as creating outdoor recreation opportunities and programs that engage people, particularly youth in the outdoors. We have an annual application process where community groups, again, the general public, nonprofit organizations, tribal governments, national parks, and local and state and federal agencies can apply for technical assistance. Next slide, please. Thank you. So I'm going to cover a couple of slides fairly quickly, but um, what I want to highlight here is that outdoor recreation and conservation means something different to each of us. And that's really how it should be. So let's say that your project idea is about developing a park that includes features where uh, those that are visually and hearing impaired can you know, go out and enjoy it. Uh, next slide, please. Or your project idea is about developing um, a system of wetlands that can act both as green infrastructure and provide buffer for um, sort of climate change events, and, but also provides the opportunity to have trails so that communities can actually utilize the space outdoors as well. Uh, next slide, please. Or your project idea is about developing an outdoor school, right? An opportunity where youth uh, in a school system can go out there and enjoy nature and learn about the environment um, and ways to recreate outdoors. Next slide. Thank you. Or your project idea is about developing relationships with health providers. So that way they are able to provide prescriptions uh, to their patients where they can, you know, where the patients can spend some time outdoors and improve their health. And next slide, please. And perhaps your project idea is about developing partnerships. And let's say developing partnerships at a regional scale, whereby you are able to partner with multiple jurisdictions and focus on large landscape conservation. Um, and this process of relationship building is really a core of our, of our program. And next slide, please. So regardless of your project idea, the goal of our program is to help you to turn those ideas into action. So how do we do this? A key role we play in all of our projects is to be the facilitator that can help you and your project partners, stakeholders, and community members to think through all of your ideas or different points of view, uh, select which ones could be pursued and identify the one or two that could be potentially implemented. 
We support projects at any stage of the planning, designing, or implementation process, but we usually assist project partners at the planning stage, which in what your screen you're seeing is called the fuzzy front end. And this is a term that is used in sort of the product design world. And this stage is really where you are trying to, you know, just make a sense of all of the ideas that you have on your mind and really identify ways to create consensus to move forward. Another reason why we come in into this early planning stage is because this is where stakeholders and the community really need to be brought into the conversation to ensure that their voices are heard and taken into consideration during the life of the project. Next slide, please. Thank you. And the reason for what we usually come into your project at this particular stage is to make sure that when you when your project gets to the finish line, right? When you are celebrating the successes in the ribbon cutting, it is not just one ribbon and it is not just one person cutting that ribbon, right? It's everybody uh, ideally can see themselves in that celebration and actually have the opportunity themselves to cut their own ribbon in success of the work that was done together. Um, and with that, I'm going to transition over to my colleague, Tomas, to keep us going. Thank you, Natalia. And uh, next slide, thank you. So now that Natalia has introduced you to the program, you may be wondering how exactly does RTCA work? Next slide, please. RTCA has a number of unique values that set our program apart and impact the way we work with project partners and communities. One is that we embrace and promote collaboration we believe that partnerships make projects stronger and working groups more effective. Our assistance is only provided when the local community invite us to help. Uh, we believe that leveraging community knowledge and local expertise is the key to community empowerment. Our assistance is tailored to the needs of each project and community. We believe in activating innovation, creativity, and entrepreneurial approaches in our projects. We advocate for strong engagement and inclusive practices of communities in the planning, decision-making, development, and outreach processes of all projects. We believe in leadership that is equitable and inclusive. And we look to support projects with tangible outcomes that will provide value to communities for the long-term. Next slide, please. So we have five areas under which our projects typically fall in. Uh, these are health, conservation, youth, organizational capacity, and partnerships. Within these uh, five broad areas, we support projects that build healthy communities through parks, trails, and outdoor opportunities. For example, through trail planning or health initiatives that help people engage uh, with physical activities outdoors. Um, we assist projects that conserve natural lands, rivers, and watersheds that involve strategic conservation planning or green infrastructure design. We support the engagement of youth in outdoor recreation and stewardship by connecting schools to parks and the outdoors or by employing youth in conservation and recreation efforts. We help strengthen organizational capacity of our, of our project partners meaning we assist with organizational planning and collaborative skills development of working groups. And we support project partners that seek to connect people to the National Park Service. Next slide, please. So what kind of help can you expect from us? As you can see on the right-hand side here, we offer a variety of services. For example, we assist with clarifying your project's vision and goals, and their relationship to other projects and, plan and plans in the region. We assist with keeping projects on track through meeting support and facilitation. We assist partners with community outreach planning to build support and garner feedback about your project. We can help partners with organizational developments and a strategic planning to help form sustainable nonprofits and working coalitions. We can assist you with inventory or mapping of natural features, recreation resources, or community assets. And once partners are ready to implement, we can also assist you in identifying 
financial resources such as grants. While we provide a wide range of services, um, we can tailor um, our assistance based on your needs for your project. Next slide, please. So our assistance falls within two categories, depending on where you are with your project or project idea. And these are project and consultation. The most successful projects, meaning those we have awarded a technical assistance grant, are those that can demonstrate a clear vision for what they're looking to accomplish, can show evidence that work has already been happening to help achieve this vision, and can demonstrate commitment from their project partners, such as resources, time, funding, et cetera. Um, however, sometimes your projects are not there yet, and that's okay. Oftentimes we provide short-term consultations to, to potential applicants to help them get ready to apply for a project with us. Next slide, please. So in this map, we show you where we worked um, within the Chesapeake watershed. And uh, we thought it would be helpful to describe a few projects that we have supported um, while you plan for your own project. So next slide. Uh, in the late 1990s, the Georges Creek Valley in Western Maryland experienced a number of flooding events that caused severe property damage to communities. These events also worsened the poor water quality issues that the area already faced due to acid mine drainage and the destabilization of stream banks due to chronic flooding. Public and private sectors saw a need for a Georges Creek Watershed Restoration Action Strategy to outline a multi-objective community-based strategy for protecting and enhancing the resources in the area. RTCA provided assistance to Allegheny County and over 16 cooperating ent entities with the development of the action strategy, where our primary role was to assist with the identification of projects to implement and the development of a public involvement and outreach strategy. One of the key public events that came as a result of the outreach strategy were the Georges Creek Water Days. The goal of the Water Days was to educate students and citizens on the importance of sound land use planning and floodplain management. During these events, students of all ages participated in stream cleanups and riparian tree plantings, and also had hands-on experience with water quality monitoring and measuring stream velocity and discharge. This action strategy became a model for land large landscape planning and conservation in other areas in the state. Next slide, please. And in 2017, RTCA began to support DC Parks and Recs with the collection of park data for the Washington DC metropolitan area by collaborating with local, state, and federal agencies. The, go the goal of this effort was to provide a database of parks for health providers to prescribe their patients' time outdoors. DC Parks and Recs was born from the Parks and Recs movement to prescribe nature to improve mental and physical health in the DC metro area, RTCA supported the relationship building with the Maryland Department of Natural Resources and the Maryland Recreation and Parks Association to be the first state where providers could prescribe time outdoors in local and state federal parks. DC Parks and Recs will grow to become Parks and Recs America, a nonprofit organization with the mission to decrease the burden of chronic disease increase health and happiness, and foster environmental stewardship. And I'll pass it on to Natalia. Thank you, Tomas. So I'm, I'm just taking over because I'm gonna highlight two more projects and I just happen to be working on those projects myself and some of the partners are here. So again, thank you so much for attending. Um, hopefully I'll do this justice. So the Southern Tier Water Trail is a conceptual water trail across 12 counties in the Southern region of the state. So think sort of the, the border with uh, Pennsylvania. And this is where the Susquehanna and the Chamonk rivers flow. And in 2020, a coalition of 12 tourism promotion agencies representing each of those counties 
apply for our assistance to support their efforts with uh, stakeholder engagement, strategic planning, and state agency collaboration. And we have been busy for the past two years. So because we're dealing with a very large you know, footprint, we focused on a multifaceted approach to the project. So project partners first focused on completing a nascent inventory of all the water access sites within their counties to assess their condition and to identify the amenities available or that may be lacking in each. In the spring of last year, we hosted three in-person visioning workshops in different areas of the footprint where stakeholders had the opportunity to share their vision for the project and then to add information to the data that we had already gathered through the inventory phase. So utilizing all of this information, um, we identified 11 priority areas for development and improvement across the project area, which is sort of where we are today in this process. Um, we've been engaging with the county departments and state agencies in these areas to introduce them um, to the priority areas and to explore ways for collaboration and support. And, um, you know, I will also mention that our project partners have been very busy applying for state and federal grant opportunities to support the promotional efforts um, for the project. So fingers crossed. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about our Heron Brown Heritage Trail project in Baltimore. And last year, the Friends of Heron Run Parks applied for assistance for the development of this heritage trail. And the goal of this interpretive trail is to highlight the stories of nature, indigenous peoples and their use of the park, as well as, as the stories of the free and enslaved peoples who worked and lived in the boundaries of the park. And the idea for this project first started with the Heron Run Archaeology Project which the Friends Group have been involved with for a number of years. And the Heron Run Archaeology Project is a public archaeology project where community members and volunteers have the opportunity to participate in the archaeological digs led by the, by the project leads. The aftermath of this project is led to the archaeologists developing technical reports of their findings. And the Friends Group would like to unpack, again, this very technical our archaeological language and find these into an interpreted trail that is approachable to people of all ages, which is what they apply for our assistance. So our role has been to facilitate the process of unpacking this language, turning it into interpretive themes that people can resonate with, and then support the friends group with the compilation of interpretive stories, which they're developing um, using GIS mapping and the sign of digital content with the idea of promoting the, the Heron Run Heritage Trail when it is completed. Um, I'll make a plug for my project partners because we'll be officially launching the Heritage Trail on June 3rd, which is National Trails Day. So if you happen to be in Baltimore, start by Heron Run Parks. And with that, I'll turn it over to Lilia. Nice. Uh, um, so, You've just heard about several different projects and as examples of what we've done around the watershed. And so now you say, how do I get involved? How can I do this? And you, whoever you are, whether you're um, a community group, you know, that can be an ad hoc, nonprofit, or any level of government, apply for our technical assistance. Um, and the applications are due March 1st. Um, like it's, we've got the application on our website. And I think Brent put that link in there. Um, so application is not terribly onerous. Um, we then review all the ones that we've gotten in. They're announced um, a month or two later. And then we start. It varies when you need the help and when your capacity is. So sometimes actually we don't start for a few more months. Um, next slide, please. And so the application is a form and it asks, you know, who you are, what your needs are, um, who your partners are. We certainly ask for a map. So to help us understand where your project is, then we used to call them support letters, but we now have called them at least three letters of commitment, which is meaning that your partners are, are really involved. They're not just saying, oh yeah, this is a great idea. 
um, but that they are part of the process. And one of the things we do with these applications is we actually hope that this leverages your project a little bit further, that maybe if, if it's a new idea, it's a way for you to leverage those new people and partners to reach out and say, hey, we've got this idea. Will you be at the table with us? Um, supplementary information can include letters of support, um, et cetera, um, press clippings, plans that you've already done. Um, and But one thing, when you're developing these projects, don't feel like you have to do this in a vacuum. We are there to help you. Um, we Again, we want this not to be a paper exercise, but actually something that would help you. So as you're developing the application, we sometimes look at this as a first draft of a work plan of what we would accomplish in that next year. Next slide. So the, what makes an application competitive? It has these elements um, that it has specific goals and outcomes that you know what you want to accomplish. Uh, it doesn't have to be absolutely cast in stone by any means, but you know you know where you want to go. Um, it's got good roles for the partners and who's going to contribute to what. Those are those letters of commitment that I talked about. Uh, one of the pieces in the application is we say, what do you want RTCA to do for, with you and for you? And that really helps. Um, so we understand what you're asking. And it, again, goes going back to don't you don't feel like you have to do this by yourself. Talk to us over the, the course of the next month to hone that in. And then we really do want broad sort of community support. Those are the projects that are going to succeed in the long run um, so that you don't have, it's great to have the individuals who have a really fun idea, but if they don't get people supporting them and the ideas, it probably won't go anywhere. Next slide. Um, so this is our contact information. I will back up. So when you apply, you get one year of our assistance, but if things are going well, if you're happy um, and we're happy and, and you've got more to do, you can always re-up for another year or so. Um, so we don't have to accomplish everything lickety split because we, you know, you've got other projects too and life happens. And so um, there's that. But the basic thing is call us or email us and, um, you know, just reach out and we can talk about it further. So that's it um, for us here. That's our contact information. People have asked if we're going to share all these documents afterwards. And yes, we are, um, or the Chesapeake Bay office is. So now I think we've got a few minutes left. If people have questions that they really want answered, um, or if our project partners are on and they want to talk about what they've accomplished, that would be fun too. We definitely have a few questions, Lilia, um, popping up into the chat. The first one that came up was from Meredith, who was wondering if you're only working with one school, can you have just one letter of support? Um, a letter of support, yes, but you need other, the commitment letters. The commitment um, letters, so you would still need more than one commitment letter? Yes, yes. So maybe, so you're working with a school, but maybe there's a community group or a boys and girls club or YMCA, the municipality or the regional planning commission. You know, again, you can call us and we could brainstorm who that might be, but um, that helps. I, I also, I do see this question here that, um, about a match. So I should have clarified that. Mostly you get our technical assistance. Um, you get us as a staff person coming on to be part of your committee. So um, we do help try to find money, but we mostly don't really have money ourselves. Um, so you can think of it as another person sitting at the table, able to do things with you and for you, if that helps. Bill, does that help your question? So it's really about people power, bringing technical expertise and support to a community effort. Yeah. You're on mute, Bill. I get the concept, but I don't know what the technical expertise is. 
it's a it's a really tricky one. And um, when we first start with a project, often there's this iterative process of, well, what are your needs? What can you do for us? And so we work together. It it varies by the project. So we can help you st with strategic planning. We can help try to lay out a trail if that's what you're trying to do. Um, if we don't have, the, say, say you want to do a river restoration or you know, um, something on a stream bank, we can help with that or pull in experts who can do that work. Um, I mean, one of the things that I've always known about RTCA is they are expert facilitators. So if one of the things you're needing is to knit together different community groups, different interests, they can come in and serve as that free, you know, support where they're helping to facilitate sessions at the community scale. Um, and, and sometimes that's simply what a project needs is, is that uh, convener and facilitator. There's a question from Nick about architectural services, and is that something RTCA can provide? Uh, we've got landscape architects, so we can do maps and drawings, diagrams. Um, I don't think we have any architects on staff. Um, but if that's a need of the project and there's more to the project, that could be one component that we try to help you find people to help with that. And I'll, I'll just add to that, that um, well, we, for example, do not provide, let's say, um, engineering drawings. Um, we do have partnerships with national organizations like the Landscape Architect, and I'm sorry, I'm blanking out on the national, the name of the whole national organization and yes, others sir. where we, we have an existing partnership and we bring them into our projects to provide that a specific service. Um, so that's the goal of being, you know, the facilitator in some of those projects is leveraging the networks that we have and bringing them into your project. Right, right. Um, and, and, if, I could, if I could jump in real quick. Uh, so in having some of the uh, office hours for the uh, grant cycle we just closed, I was definitely getting questions related to uh, assistants needing to better understand the audience that they were trying to reach or who were the people, you know, people would come with an idea and didn't know who uh, might be benefiting from that kind of idea. So for the folks in the audience, you know, really think about where you have a question that you'd like to phone a friend kind of scenario where, where could you bring in somebody into a conversation to help you uh, get to the next level of planning or get to the next level of being able to put a proposal together uh, you know, a lot of folks were having questions about the cost of certain things or, or how to map out what the project would look like from a budget point of view. These are all questions that somebody that has that expertise could help you answer. So think about, you know, inviting somebody into your office and explaining to them what you're trying to do and, and you know, having them in the office with you, talking to you through these. Uh, there isn't a money piece. There's just the the thought piece of putting some of these projects together is how I would view how they could help. And I, I see a question from Nick about typically how many staff are assigned to oh, a project. That's a great question, thank you. Um, so just in the last few years, we've started to work on a team model. So for instance, when Natalia was talking about the Southern Tier Water Trail in New York, she and I are both working on that. And we had another staff member who is really more facile with GIS, who in the early days, he was helping us also. So we try to bring in our different expertises within our own staff to work on the, a project together. Um, someone asked about lawyers and uh, land assessors. We don't have them on staff. But again, that's the, let's sit around the table and figure out, is there a lawyer in the area who would do something pro bono? Or do we, can we find some money to hire a land assessor? Um, so it's hopefully part of the bigger picture. I think that there are some questions about how that mix of your technical services, reaching out and finding people that can work with folks, but wh who's paying for what? 
and are your services free the whole time? And then can your services be combined with grants or LWCF funding? So just sort of that the, the complex nature of how technical assistance, financial assistance, and how that all weaves right. together. So our time, it, it will not cost you anything except for your taxpayer dollars at work. So thank you very much. Um, so you don't have to pay us. If you're going for a non-federal grant, yes, you can use our staff time as in-kind help. I th think it's across the board. We cannot, you can't match federal dollars with federal dollars. So if you're going for a recreation trails program grant, you can't use our staff time as part of that match. I'll, I'll add to that because I think I, Mary did also ask in terms of um, if we bring, let's say like an engineer would the applicant still have to pay the national organization. Um, and you know, in, in terms of our relationship with the landscape architect group, that's no, that assistance is pro bono. And ideally when we are establishing those relationships with, with other organizations and bringing people into the project, it is it's free. Again, it's free technical assistance. We're just making the connections and see how we can bring more support um, and work in collaboration, right? We get a lot farther together than individually. There are some specific project examples that folks have in the chat that they'd uh, like to talk through. There's also another question about, can an individual partner with a nonprofit and apply for RTCA? Yes, again, um, talk, talk your application, your project idea through with us. Um, you would still need those letters of commitment from three organizations. So we can maybe help you brainstorm who those people are in your community who might be interested in your project and want to be part of it. So um, I tell you one, and, and oh, I missed one question about oh. location and where you can help Shenandoah Valley. Virginia, do you help out in that area? We work across the country. Um, so so we happen to be in the Northeast region, which is Virginia North, but we've got staff members around the country who work on with RTCA. And we we have current work happening in the in the valley. So Alyssa, um, please reach out to us uh, because really, you know, a lot of the I realize you have questions, you know, around like how exactly does this work? But really it's when we talked that we start to, you know, unravel a little bit as to what it is that you're looking to do and how we can help you. Um, so please reach out to us um, about, you know, your specific project idea and what it is that you would like to, um, to see happen. There's a question about training. Does RTCA provide training in the conservation areas um, focused on job readiness? Um, sometimes we do do trainings or we, this is the beauty of having a national program so that we have all of our colleagues that we rely on and our just knowledge base and connections that we can say, oh, maybe you want to go talk to the conservation fund if you've got a green um, gateway community project because they've got great trainings um, and et cetera. That's just an example. So if we can't do it, which we sometimes can, we can probably know where to maybe send you. Okay. And then one last question. Um, when you say letters of commitment, do you mean partners are committing their time or money? What What's being specified in that commitment letter? Right. So like I said, it was, we used to just call them letters of support, but we were finding that maybe you've all written grants and you've, you know, put together the template for the letter of support. And it's pretty easy for somebody to sign it and they really are not gonna be very involved. So they don't have to necessarily put in money, but if that's what they've got, they can, if it's a community foundation, for instance, but um, it's the time and that they're really invested. And if you hold monthly meetings, they're going to be there. That's what that really means. Thank you. Um, Wendy, I think I'll, we'll, turn it back to you. We'll be capturing all the questions in the chat and making sure that the 
PowerPoint and the presentation are available to everybody. Yes, thank you. So um, I want to thank the team from the RTCA program. Thank you all for the interest. There's clearly lots of um, needs out there and, and more questions. So we'll make sure when we send out the slides that you have the, the web links. Um, you know, there's this question in there about how do you schedule a pre application consultations. So we'll make sure we um, feature that um, and the right place to start. Um, and really, this is an opportunity to get to know another community assistance program that is out there that has been working for, you know, um, decades um, and might have done some work in your um, in your neck of the woods. But um, we want to make sure more people are aware of it. Um, and that open call is right now uh, with the March deadline. Um, and uh, Natalia just put her email in there. So that's a great place to start. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so please look in the chat for Natalia's email. And um, for those that wanted to follow up and, and just do some um, thinking out loud with Natalia about project ideas, um, please reach out. So um, if we'll just show the, pull the slides back up, um, we have one um, more slide to show, and that's just to do a save the date for our next MPS Chesapeake Gateways Network chat. It's April 6th um, uh, from 10 to 12. It's going to be focusing on refreshing the Chesapeake Gateways Network, really focused on partners and connections and alignment. So look for that to be um, coming out with, um, again, the information about the Zoom and just thank everyone. I want to thank the team from the MPS uh, RTCA office, but also from the Chesapeake Gateways office. You know, um, Sherry Esperson for really working um, to pull the RTCA team in, and Eddie Gonzalez for pulling us together, um, Bob Campbell um, from our office, as well as Rebecca Stanfield McCowan and, and Brett Mitchell for bringing this to you today. So look for an email with the slides um, so everyone has that. And then we always post the recordings on our uh, YouTube page. So thank you all. Have a great weekend and uh, see you at the next chat. Thanks for having us. Thank you.